Time to please Allah, a chance to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says, all on who spend in good cause. Good deeds are opportunities, sparkling bright and true, raising you in the sight of Allah and adorning Al Jannah for you. So rush to earn his reward, don't forget the oppressed, and when you go to sleep at night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, welcome to another episode of A Time to Please Allah. And this is your host, Gabriel Romani, live from Dubai, 8 p.m. on Thursday night, as every week, alhamdulillah, 7 p.m. Mecca time. And we always hope that it is a good time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you had a very productive week. We are just kicking in uh, the weekend, alhamdulillah, here. And... Uh, we had a very busy week, alhamdulillah, and um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's always, uh, the Muslim tries to use his time as, as wisely as he can, and sometimes he fails, of course, or she fails, and this is uh, just the way things are, but, um, however, the Muslim always holds himself or herself, herself accountable uh, with time, and, um, you know, we call this show a time to please Allah, and actually, 24 hours a day, uh, we have the chance to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require um, that much effort, actually, if you think about it. Of course, there's degrees of effort, but it's not an effort that cannot be achieved, let's say. It is not an effort that cannot be, uh, or, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, it cannot be imagined. No, actually, subhanAllah, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, can be achieved sometimes very easily. And um, this is something that, uh, inshallah, every Muslim uh, can. And like watching the show, if you make a niyyah, an intention to, you know, benefit for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then you are pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you gain some knowledge from the show and you spread this knowledge to others, or you become the means of other people, uh, watching the show or benefiting from the show or any other Islamic show that Huda TV offers and there are plenty of them, mashallah and all the other Islamic channels that are out there that are striving day and night to provide you with quality shows quality education, informational ses uh, sessions very, you know, very uh, rich and, and wealthy in Islamic information to help us and help you to become better Muslims, to help us and help you become better human beings, to become better fathers, better sons, better daughters, better mothers, better husbands and wives, whatever you might have. So uh, you can start by liking our page, inshallah, Time to Please Allah on Facebook. Just search it, facebook.com forward slash Time to Please Allah. Or just Google us. Just Google us. These days it's very easy to just type in Google a time to please Allah and you will get the links to our shows. Go to YouTube, watch our previous episodes, share them, share them on social media. Let other people benefit. We try to talk about current issues, things that are very much related to your daily life, day-to-day -day life. We talk about education, tarbiya, uh, about uh, gender relations, about uh, youth and the fitness and youth that youth are face, facing these days we talk about business we talk about inheritance and wills as we did in last show and it was a very very beneficial show that i really recommend everyone to go back and watch with uh, brother muhammad maria who was talking about islamic wills and what are the importance of those wills and how it can be aligned with the law and so on so that you can make sure you protect yourself and your family we talk about many, many things that are sometimes are taboo and people don't want to discuss. These things will be discussed on a time to please Allah, like dating and uh, relationships, you know, intimate relationships between husband and wife. We have quite a few episodes on that. Um, many, many things that will benefit uh, the Ummah and help uh, you and I, inshallah, try to understand our faith 
uh, much better. Um, speaking about uh, you know being productive and always you know always being a time to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, the Muslim tries to always when he fails when he realizes that look I have wasted time right he tries to kind of go back into his life and say well how can I benefit myself. And of course, we are here on TV and you're watching things on YouTube and on social media. But sometimes that also can become a waste of time. It can kind of like, you know, you kind of drift away from what you are supposed to do. And then you compromise your family time and you compromise your, uh, your work time and so on. So the Muslim kind of goes back at the end of the week, usually. Every day, of course, at the end of the day, before you go to sleep, you kind of sit down, uh, you know, lay down. Before you go to sleep, you make your athkar. And you also try to... Uh, think back, what, like what did I do today? How was my productivity? Uh, what could I have done better? Um, how could I have uh, improved on, on certain things? What mistakes have I done? Uh, people that might have wronged me, um, people that I might have wronged, uh, forgiving people, maybe, you know, kind of going back and say, okay, maybe tomorrow I have to go back and ask forgiveness from this person or so, uh, or the other person. It's kind of like a review, you know, you kind of hold yourself accountable as Omar Khattab radiallahu an used to say, you know, take account of yourself. Take account of yourself before you are taken account of. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take account of you. When you take account of yourself, how did you use your time? How did you use your tongue, your eyes, your ears, uh, your body? How, what did you do in your day? Uh, you can kind of go back and try to fix some things. Now, of course, as human beings, we create a lot of damage and not everything can be fixed. However, we try to make it a learning situation so that tomorrow you might not repeat the same mistakes. And this is something very important. This is something very important to kind of sit down and it's called introspection. Just kind of look yourself, look inside, and see what do you have inside. What have you done? And you should try to do this at the end of each day. And then kind of the end of the week, kind of, kind of look back again and say, well, what have I done in the whole week? Right? What have I done this whole week? What was my productivity level? How was my niya, for example? Was I on a clear niya that you know, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because if not, you might have benefited yourself in this dunya. You might have worked... You might have been a good you know, employee at work, a good father at home. Um, but there was no niya or an active, aware niya that you're doing it for the sake of Allah. And you could have gained extra ajr for that. And you might have lost that. And when you, when you try to kind of condition yourself to think like that, then really life becomes very sweet, right? Because your whole life is kind of around the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and it's not something boring. It's not something like, oh, ultra-religious or anything like that, you know, that you become some kind of monk or something like that. No. It's, Islam is not, Islam is not uh, you know, uh, like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, did not decree for Islam to be like that. It's, it's just very natural. It's just very organic. Islam is very organic. It kind of intermingles with everything in your life and kind of engulfs and, and, and encompasses everything in your life. And you, you're not some kind of special person if you pray in the masjid. You're not some kind of special person if you make your athkar. If, you're not some kind of special person if you have made a sincere niya to, to be good at work and to do your best at work or to be number one in whatever you do, right? Uh, it's, it's not. It's, it's really a challenge for yourself to see if, if your life is filled with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whenever you, you fall short and make mistakes you return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is really what sets us apart from everything else is, is this, this review process this, this uh, feedback process you kind of have your steps throughout your life throughout your day and then you reach you know, kind of like the end of the day which almost, it's like you know, sleep is, 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 a, is a minor death Right, this, it symbolizes a minor death. Your soul kind of, you know, departs, uh, and it kind of symbolizes, you know, what will happen at the end of your life. This is the end of your day, and alhamdulillah, in the morning you're given another chance. Allah subhanahu wa taala, uh, you know, gives you back your soul, and uh, you say your dua, alhamdulillah, ladi ahiyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi nushur. And you praise be to Allah who has given us life back after he has taken it. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our return. And you have another chance, you know, the cycle starts again. And the feedback process 
you know, of what you have done kind of, you know, takes you back to the start and you say, okay, this was Sunday and this is what I could have done better or these are the mistakes and here's now Monday and I try to do better. And maybe I failed on Monday in, you know, A, B, C, but I've done okay in, you know, D, E, F and so on. So then Tuesday you'll work on A, B, C and then you'll also try to improve on uh, D, C, uh, D, E and F and you'll try to do better on Wednesday and on Thursday. And if you have any failed, you kind of kind of go back. And, and it's a whole, I mean, it really gives purpose to your life. But you have to be aware of the system. You have to consciously take a step towards the system. And always rationalize and go back and think and be aware of it. And be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and know that you will fail. And, and it, you will fail. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, yani that yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani, if you would have not sinned, yani you would have destroyed you all and replaced you with people who sin and repent, and sin and repent again. Allah loved those who repent. This is the nature of Bani Adam. This is the nature of the sons and daughters of Adam. And that's why Islam always gives you hope, right? That, you know, yes, you're not a monk, you're not some kind of, you know, angel, a'udhu billah, or saint, or whatever other, you know, systems have, but you're, you're just an organic human being, and it's part of you to fall, and it's part of you to sin, and, and it's part of you to kind of, you know, a fall short, but then you come back, that's also part of you. It's also part of you to come back and regain, you know, that, 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 that uh, opportunity to, to set yourself straight, and you do that through tawbah, and you do that through self-analysis, and you do that to, to inspecting the example and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then this is your, your, your curriculum, and you realign your, your, your KPIs and your, you know, with, with that curriculum, and you try to, 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 you know, to, to yield a good, you know, comprehensive person that is you know, susceptible to sins, susceptible to mistakes, but always through that feedback process, that person never gives up. He always comes back or she always comes back and just moves on through life as opposed to just being lost, you know. Just trying to look for different uh, role models and different systems uh, that, that will make them feel good. will give them that temporary, uh, you know, the temporary dissociation from anxiety, the anxiety of sin, which is a good thing, actually. It's this nafs, nafs al-lawam, the nafs, the self-reprimanding, uh, nafs uh, who blames itself which is a good thing because this is uh, a prerequisite for, for tawbah that you feel bad about that and you shouldn't let that go you shouldn't try to look for different models and different systems outside of Islam to kind of you know almost let you forget about that or reduce that blame and move on and do whatever so you can feel comfortable whatever it might be Islam wants you to feel it to be organic, to feel the pain, to feel the fear, to feel the comfort, to try to align these things in the end and to be a, a, you know, a very balanced person who kind of understands themselves, understands who their Lord is, understands their direction in life and moves forward even though they might have to climb over many walls and might have to get out of many holes but in the end the direction is very straight and clear and this is Islam. We'll take a short break, inshallah. We'll return back on a time to please Allah. And we'll discuss about our subject today. Jazakum Allah khair. Time to please Allah. A chance to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says. TV commercials motivate viewers into immediate action and to sway consumer loyalty from one brand or service to the other. That's why we're here for you, to help you sell your products and services by using creative ideas that bring life into your own TV commercial. Advertise your business and branded products and services on Huda TV. We will offer you fast-paced and energetic 30-second affordable TV spots. Advertise on Huda TV, acquire fresh customers and stay within your budget. For more info or to receive a quote, please send your inquiries to to advert at Huda TV. Huda TV. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. قالوا أجئتنا لتأفكنا عن آلهتنا فأتنا بما تعبنا إن كنت من الصالحين. 
له ملك السماوات والأرض وإلى الله ترجع الأمور فلما رأوه أعظا مستقبل أوديتهم قالوا هذا عارض ممطرنا بل هو ما استعجلتم فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما فاكهة ونخل ورمان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله It's always a time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your host, Gabe Al-Romani, and welcome back to the show. Um, just we, I had a little introduction, inshallah. We're talking about uh, uh, the Islamic system of, of, of kind of going back and, and checking yourself and, and uh, reviewing yourself every day. And then at the end of the week, you can kind of see how you could have done things better. And this is part of that, uh, you know, muhasaba. You kind of take account uh, of yourself and your deeds and then try to do better uh, subhanallah and um, today inshallah we are gonna steer into a different uh, direction inshallah and uh, we will talk about uh, family life and Islam and how does Islam look at the family life and how should a Muslim focus on his family life what, what does it mean to be a family man or woman what are the priorities? And joining me in the studio today, I have Imam Abdul Basid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kif hal? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Welcome back to the show. Jazakum Allah khair. I'm give you barakah in this meeting. And you too, how was your week? Alhamdulillah, one of the best weeks. Alhamdulillah. Allah. Okay, good, good. Alhamdulillah. Anything you can share? Any, yeah, actually, kind of, uh, we made lots of reading. That's why I consider it's a good week. Uh, okay, reading, uh, mashallah. Yeah. So it reminds me of the some uh, the time of my father, may Allah have mercy on him. He mm -hmm. used to uh, recommend us always to read. In fact, he used to have his own library, yes, and he will say to us, "Bring me this book, bring me that book," yes, which uh, caused us to re discover those books, so those dimensions in which those books speak about, and so on. So it recalls to me those good dates. Good day, oh, yeah. Yeah. Reading is, is something amazing. And everyone should set some time apart Definitely, uh, sure. during the week. I mean, we live such busy lives. You know, I usually always carry a book with me in my bag, even if I don't read it. Sure. But I just know that I might have five minutes here, some ten minutes read, here. Just yeah. take it out sure. and just sure. just read something you know, and try to try to set for myself uh, a little bit of time of reading. And now with the phones and the tablets, you know, you can kind of have the the book in PDF yeah. on these, right? We are the nation of Iqra. Yes. So we have to implement this verse. Really, here. yeah, really we are, you know, really. <laughs> and you know, it's even like uh, you're on a, maybe on a bus or uh, stuck in traffic sometimes. Or you can kind of pick up the, you know, the tablet True. and you make use of, of time, mashallah. Anything interesting that you read this week there? Uh, a couple of things which were interesting, actually. The more interesting thing is that there are still people who love to read, who love to write. Yes. Uh, it's not true to say that there are people, that the people in general, they are away from reading and writing. This mm. is not true, I think. Right. According to my personal um, you know, experience, I think there are many people who still read. I remember that a few days back I went to Sharjah Library 
I saw many youth there, Mashallah. men and women who are coming there just to read. Mashallah. So this is a positive indication which we should you know, promote in our society. In Sharjah Library, I believe they have a, a great uh, collection of, of, of yeah, Islamic huge, books yeah, as well, a huge definitely. collection. Yeah, I mean. It's a huge library, it contains different dimensions of studies, you know, it's not only about Islamic studies. People from different themes, they are coming and joining. Yes. Yeah. And this is what Islam wants from us, to read in all themes yes, of life. Yes, yeah. comprehensive, yeah. mashallah. I think Dubai has also a, a, quite a few public libraries. Sure, yeah, you know, this sure. is something that I found in this area uh, that is, is really good. Uh, in Dubai, there's a lot of public libraries, and it uh, kind of you know reminds us back home. You know, the public public library system is is, is really good. It's just that you know the books back home sometimes are not. Uh, you know, it's like ilm uh, layan, you know. So we always have to make sure that it's it's very beneficial knowledge. Especially we are in UAE in a year which was declared as the year of reading. Yes, yes, yeah, that's a something very was declared. But officially, it was officially declared as the, the, the year, year of reading. reading, is to promote reading in schools, universities, right. and gatherings, and centers, and so on and so forth. So this is a culture which we have to, you know, create in our own families from childhood. The child should learn yes. that he have to read. You know, if you, if you reflect on the word Quran itself only, not in the entire book. Right. The word Quran comes from what? From right. the Quran word. The, the word Quran itself means the book which is read over, over and, and over. over again, so yeah. this is what you have to do: read over and over. Yes. It's actually when you read, you are actually benefiting from the intellectual product which was created by those who were before you or no. those who are with you no, so you are benefiting from those intellectual pro you are increasing the level of your mind no. the capacity of your mind increases no. with your the more you no. read yeah. and the uh, the reading process um, kind of linking into our topic today can be on, on a family level that Definitely. the family itself has to as you said your father would do to inculcate a culture of, of reading within the family Right, that the Muslim family is a is a literate family, and the father and the mother, you know, as being the, the you know the, the leaders of the house, and especially the father, uh, he needs to push his family to to be literate and to be uh, educated. This is part of their uh, yeah. That's their, uh, a part of our duty as parents, as family members, to educate those who are under us those whom we have to take care of. No. We always read the verse in the Quran which says, "Ya yuhaladina manu." No. And prevent yourself and your family yes. members from the fire of hell. Uh, some of the Sahaba, like Ali, عليه, they say that prevent yourself and your families. How do you prevent your families? Sorry. By educating them. Educate, no. How can you prevent your family members from the fire of hell when you are not educating them? Teaching them so right. we are actually a nation. Or Islam is a nation, or Islam is a religion which converted a nation which was not reading yes. into a nation which is creating knowledge. Knowledge, Allah. And this is what uh, is, is very important. This, you said the, wor the word uh, a nation that, that creates knowledge, right? Because um, I was, um, I, I believe it was a, a conference in the UAE that was um, talking about the, the promoting uh, knowledge and promoting development of knowledge, right? And he, the the person was presenting, uh, said that we are uh, uh, right now a we consume knowledge. We're not at a leader in, in 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 producing knowledge, but we need to be a leader in producing knowledge. But so far, we're we're knowledge consumers. You know, in most of the Muslim world right now, we we take the knowledge from others at this point. While we used to be knowledge producers before, mm -hmm. sure. so we need to kind of re we regain back that, and through programs such as this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that that are being pushed. I know also, I believe in Sharjah, there there's a program that uh, on which any family could actually uh, be entitled to, to receiving a full library that is delivered to their house mm -hmm. of, of a variety of books for free, right? right. There, there's a process of applying for that. But every every family is is, is entitled to receiving a, a comprehensive ri library of different you know books uh, that has been selected, and everyone can you know the family can you know basically uh, educate themselves and, and take the literacy I, to a different actually, level. Actually, creating knowledge is an excellent thing, which requires lots of reflection, mm. lots of thinking, lots of rethinking, lots of research work. And this is what Quran wants yeah. from us. It always says to us, <coughs> All these are different ways which, in which God is saying to us, think about the matters which are around you. Mm. Reflect upon them in order to create better knowledge about them. 
and impart them to others as well. Let others also benefit. Yes. That others, other human beings who are living with you on the globe, let them benefit from this knowledge. Mm -hmm. We remember in the in the Islamic history, you may find occasions in which people from different parts of the world, yes. from China, from India, from Asia, from Europe, coming from different parts of the world to study in the Islamic centers of knowledge. No. And then they, when they go back to their own countries, they become scholars and teachers in their own countries. We have one of these great, you know, let's say a great uh, learned person in the Western civilization, who's known as the Sylvester II. Mm used to rule great parts in, uh, in Europe. No. He learned in Andalusia, in, in, yes, in, in Spain, and oh, the, with the Muslims. Andalus, yes, Andalus. You have this uh, Maimonides, yes. whom we call as Musa bin Maimun. Musa bin Maimun yes. The Jews, they call them as Rambam. This person, where was he educated? He is considered to be a philosopher amongst his own nation. Yes. Where was he educated? He was educated, and the Muslim or Ibn Rushd educated him. Wow. So we were a, a nation which was creating knowledge mm -hmm. and gifting it to other nations. To other nations. No. This is what Muslims were, and this is how Muslims should, should be. Actually, be, yeah. Yeah. so this is this is point number one when it comes to responsibility of a family. We said definitely. is to educate, right? It's fine, and then definitely the parents have to leave that and inculcate and education beyond the, the TV screen. You know, it's really to the point of, of books. Now, of course, we have technology today and so on, but people need to go back to, to the real texts, you know, to, to real education, inshallah. And that, that's, I would say, a priority for a family, a Muslim family. Number two, what's, what's, uh, what's, what would be important in, in a Muslim family and, and what would be a priority, again, uh, among the Muslim family, other than producing knowledge and benefiting and learning knowledge? Yeah, the, and everything related to the family, you know, uh, to the family realm, let's say, everything related to the family is considered to be important. That's, no. There's nothing concerning the family which is not important, whether it's no. a tiny thing or a major thing. In all circumstances, everything related to your parents, to your children, to your brothers, sisters, wives, spouses, everything is considered to be you know, uh, very important and, and crucial. No. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the family relation, He described many relations, many types of relations yes. in the Quran. Even the relation which is between God and His creation is yes. mentioned in the Quran. So. But when it comes to describe the family relation, see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْكُمْ مِيثَاقٌ غَلِيظًا no. That we took from you a firm, a strong commitment. No. When you decided to make a family, it's a firm commitment. It's not a commitment between you and between the person with whom you are establishing right. a family. Right, right. It is a commitment between you and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place. Yes. That's what Allah is saying. مِيثَاقٌ غَلِيظًا is something which is very strong, very heavy and something which you cannot break. Allah. That's ghalidha. Allah. Allah is saying, This strong commitment which you are making, you have to be concerned about it. You have to fulfill the rights of that, of no. that, uh, of that no. commitment. No. Yeah, you may, any person who, who, who breaks the family ties or harms the family in any, of the, in any way is considered to be a person who is committing a major sin. So Whether he's disobeying his parents, let's say, or not giving his children his rights, or a wife not caring about their husband, or a husband not caring about... You know, tr try to think about the family relations in any dimension, and any person who harms that relation is considered to be a person who is indulged in a major sense. In fact, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the hadith says, مَنْ خَبَّبَ إِمْرَأَةً عَلَى زَوْجِهَا فَعَلَيْهِ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ That a person who breaks the relation or who causes a woman to break with her husband is considered to be a cursed person in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he's harming the most important unit in the society. Yes, the yeah, if your family is the families are considered to be sound, Everything in the, in the society, society is sound because no. it's, the, it's the fundamental unit. You know? No, subhanAllah. No. Let's move on to um, the issue of, 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 of manners, okay? We find today that uh, the family, um, the family unit is, is affected by, um, be it children, be it the husband, be it the wife, the lack of manners, okay? And that affects the family itself. I mean, you're talking about respect from the husband to the wife, the wife to the husband, the husband and wife to the children and the children to the husband, all these ways there, there's, there's respect that should be between. And then the, the family itself respecting others and so on. Uh, what's the importance of this and how? Uh, yeah, this is a crucial issue as well. 
You know, if you consider the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place, the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for major, for major part speaks about what? About akhlaq, about aqeedah, about history. And then speaks, you know, in a minor portion about laws. Yes. In many cases, we become very concerned, too much concerned about laws yes. and less concerned about iman, less concerned about akhlaq and so on. This is yes. a major mistake which people do. Yes. This is a major mistake. Likewise, when it comes to family, you know, laws or family relations, let's say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he describes the family relations, he says in Surah Al-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً that from, the, from amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He made from amongst yourselves spouses for you. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And He created between you affection and mercy. Yes. Affection and mercy has nothing to do with rights. The right is to provide a house, isn't it? No. To provide shelter, to provide clothes. This, this will be rights, yes. This is above rights. This is above rights, yeah. yes. This is What's above right is love. Love. Yeah, love creates what? If somebody loves you, you'll be generous with him. Sahih. But if somebody deals with you in terms of rights, this is what you deserve and this is what I deserve. In this way, people do not care about love, of people about, do not care about emotions and yes. so on. But at the same time, uh, subhanAllah, you know, there was a, a very beautiful saying, uh, I believe it's one of the scholars said, they used to say, they used to advise women. They said, marry a husband or a man who fears Allah. If he loves you, he will treat you like a princess, right? And he will really... If, if he doesn't, which is, sometimes it can be the case, right, that two people might get married, but love will not be, uh, you know, nurtured there. It's not going to, right? But then he says, but if he doesn't love you, he will never wrong you. He will not wrong you. SubhanAllah. Because those rights, in the end, are still to protect True. those people, if the love is not theirs. And sometimes it's not. Definitely. As Omar Khattab said, how many households were built upon love? And how many upon the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because no. sometimes, yeah, love is something that is so beautiful. And it should be developed and should be, you know, that, that ultimate, you know, goal that every husband and wife should have and, and family and so on. But in the case that is missing, still the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the people. I would like to focus on the matter of love here. No. That the family members should know how to provide love for each other. No. It is because the family members are not getting sufficient love at home yes. that they are seeking it outside. Exactly. This if is the very husband, let's yes. say, uh, husband didn't get the sufficient level of love which he is looking for From at home, yes. he'll definitely go outside. He does. The children likewise. Same. If you being a father, you didn't give your, your son what he deserves of love, what satisfies him. Yes. He will definitely go and find somewhere outside, and his friends maybe, whom you don't know who are there. And this is one of the and biggest some of, problems. And some other places, whom you don't know what type of places those, yes. those are, and so on and so forth. Because love, Sheikh Jibreel, is considered to be a human need. A human. It's a need in you, it's a it's need a in every human, human being. It's yeah. a basic yeah. human Every human be being needs love. And that's why when the scholars of Aqeedah come to uh, describe or define the word Allah, Allah, Allah is ma'bud. The normal definition, yes, yes, the one whom we worship. Yes. But the deeper definition of the word Allah is the one whom you worship out of love. Allah, Allah Akbar. So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually words. satisfying the need for love which is there Allah in a human being. He's satisfying that. Allah and again, in whom again you are in need for love. Allah and the family members should make sure that they are providing sufficient love for each other. That brings them close to each other. That makes them generous to each other. That you are not required to say to your son, son, I need so and so. In fact, the son will do it for you before you, are, you have to say it to them, and so on. That's one of the basic requirements you know, for which a person should be careful and concerned. Now, now let's say, um, how can someone, can someone train themselves to, to provide that love, uh, to, to push themselves to provide that love? Is that something that someone should rationalize and really train themselves yani, as, as knowing this is a basic need, right? Because love is a natural thing. What if that natural connection is not there? Cool. I'll tell you one important point here. Love is of two types. Yeah. One is a rational love yes. and the second is a natural love. Yeah. The natural love is due to an inclination which is found in you. Yes. The rational love is due to a need which you want to satisfy. For instance, you want to make a building. No. Then you will be concerned about some people who can do it for you, isn't it? Sorry. So this will create a link between you and between those experienced people. No. This link is a kind of love. 
Likewise, you are ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of your children if you want to make your way towards Jannah, Jannah. in the final kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, sure. This should create a rational love in your mind so that you are careful about your children. This is the rational love. Mm. There's another love which is the natural inclination. And Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in every human being a natural inclination in his heart for his parents, for his wives, for his children, for his brother. This is no. naturally built by yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a human being. Alhamdulillah. So you don't have, you, all what you have to do is to focus on the good aspects. The reason behind some people do not, do not find proper inclination towards the family members is because they do not focus on the good aspects of the children or the other family members and so on. They always focus on the improper aspects mm. which cause them to hate the children maybe, to hate the family, other, other members of the family and so on. Mm. You will find in the Quran many examples actually from which we can learn how the righteous people used to love the family members, how brothers love brothers, our sisters love their brothers, brothers love their sisters, the wives love their husbands, parents loving their children, and so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Nuh alayhi salam, <coughs> although his son was not a believer, so, Nuh alayhi salam was a prophet as we all know, yeah. but his son was not a believer. Yet after the destruction of his nation, a destruction which caused even his son to be, to be removed, yeah. to be seized. He says after the entire thing taking place, Oh Allah, my son is from my family. Allah. And my son, why is he saying this to Almighty Allah? He loved this son. Because he loved his son. That's the natural inclination which Allah created. Ibrahim makes dua for his father, isn't it? It's there in the Quran more than one time. No. It's mentioned. Why should he make a dua for his father who is not following his, his religion? Uh -huh. Who is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. Because he was not able to get out of that love which he is carrying for his father. Allah. Yeah. So, لَكَ رَبِّي إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Likewise, you have Musa alayhi salam. Musa, Musa's brother, Harun, how did he become a prophet? Uh, it is because of the dua of his brother. Ah, uh, sahih. No. The yes. dua of the brother caused his brother to be... Do, are we making dua for... Are we having a good will for our brothers today? We have to learn from Musa alayhi salam. Uh, his dua caused his brother to become a prophet. Not a, not, a, not a normal righteous person, a prophet, imagine. Mm. That was the strength of his dua. So, وَجَعَلِّي وَزِيرًا مِنْ أَهْلِي هَارُونَ أَخِي أَشْدُدْ بِهِ أَشْدُدْ بِهِ أَزْرِي وَأَشْرِكُ فِي أَمْرِي He's making a dua. The dua is mentioned in the Quran. Subhan. So, this is how the, the, the family members should treat each other. They, they make dua for each other. They, they want dua. khair for each other. Today we see yeah. people actually making stuff for like <laughs> dua against each other. People breaking ties within families. Um, you know, many cases come where, uh, for example, the father does not allow the children to see the mother, or the mother does not allow the children to see the father, or the uncle at the end. Many cases come to us sometimes, you know, people complaining about these things, subhanAllah, and they say, you know, what should we do, يعني, subhanAllah, you know. It's, it's, you know, the times are, are so different now. People are, are working really hard at breaking the bonds of family, and we know that whoever severe this ties, of, of kinship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will severe them, yani, which is, is something, su such, a, such a great, you know, uh, danger, subhanAllah. Uh, because the society is, as you said, this is the, f the functional unit of a society, is a family. And if that family is severed, if that family is not linked properly, this is the building block of society, society yeah. will not be, subhanAllah. Uh, everything that we want in our society, everything which we want. We want education in our society, mm -hmm. let's say. We want good morals in our society. We want anything good in us. We want pious people in our society. The place where we create all these good things is the family. Yeah. Whatever is being created in the families is the, things which, is the thing which you see in the societies. Outside in the community, if you see good people, that means there are families which are creating good, good people. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about the children, about the righteous children that they say about the parents, وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا That, oh, oh God, have mercy on my parents as they raised me properly when I was young. Allah Means the, 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 the parents will deserve the righteousness of the children or the dua of the children if they raise them properly. No. This is the contribution of the parents. No. You contribute to your community, to your society with good children, and these children will contribute for you. Now, obviously the next question comes in. 
it needs investment it needs time how does a, a family the members of a family specifically the father uh, and the mother uh, you know dealing with, specifically the father actually who has to work outside he has to spend a lot of time outside what kind of balance does it have to be between the husband and the wife what kind of sharing in terms of responsibilities because very important time has to be invested in the family I'm not talking just about children but the whole family, parents, uh, duty stores, parents, other uh, kinship, and so on, children. Uh, you know, it, it seems like somehow that the the man usually is is at a at a very important you know has a very important role in trying to juggle and make sure he gets the correct time invested in this family. And you know, today in the 21st century, we know our jobs start very early in the morning and finish very late at night. And uh, you know, it's it's the way society has been shaped is usually that the man is kept away from his family for a long time. Sure. Sometimes the mother as well. Now we find the women are, you know, pretty much on par with men working outside and really, you know, yeah. struggling. And then this this affects uh, sure. the relation, doesn't it? Somehow, this is one of the major drawbacks uh, which could be found in some families that the parents are not available when the children are in need for the assistance of the parents. However, for those parents who do not have sufficient time to spend with their children, for them at least to spend some quality hours is very essential for mm -hmm. them. If you spend two hours in a day with your children, let those two hours be fully, exclusively for your children. Mm -hmm. And the best thing mm -hmm. which you can do is to listen to your children. Oh, wow. Listen to your children, what do they say? Because you will never discover, Brother Jibril, a person can never discover his children if he's not listening to them. Yeah, sorry. Listening to them doesn't mean that you are small and they are big. No, no. Because you are big, you are listening to them. Because you are more educated, more learned, you have to listen to them. Because you'll never discover a person's personality, the way of thinking, the problems he's suffering from, unless you listen from him. Yeah. If you go to a good doctor, physician, for instance, the first thing that he will tell you, sit down and tell him what problems you have. Hmm. He will listen to you, isn't it? Yes. Likewise, being a good man, a learned man, a wise man, requires you to sit down with your children and listen to them. How much do, listen, do we listen to our children today? Mm. How much do we listen about the things which happen with them with the, in the school, let's say, in the market, in the phones, in the mobiles, in the gadgets which they use, what's happening with them? We are not listening to them. Once we listen to them carefully, we can discover their personalities. Mm. We can discover whom they are. For, there are some parents who don't know who, who are the children, who, who, what, what personalities the children are having. So we have to discover what problems they are suffering from, what defects they are, what challenges they are facing in their life. Once you listen to them, once you discover, then you will be able to suggest good things to them as solutions. Yes. Your solutions, if they are in a different valley, and the problems are in a different valley, they never meet, then they'll never appreciate your opinions, your ideas. They'll always say, Dad never understands our problems, yes. because you never listen to them. Mm -hmm. The proper way to deal with the children is to give them quality hours. This is if a person is not having sufficient time to right. spend with it. And the best thing which you can do is to listen to them. Beside this thing, beside listening, you know, it is not advised to punish the children and you know, to, to erect them. This is not advised at all. You know. One of the great Muslim historians, or let's say Muslim philosophers, Ibn Khaldun, very famous, in his Muqaddimah he says that, that punishing the children too much makes them hypocrites. Subhanallah. Yeah, you want hypocrites, you want quick uh, solutions, punish them. Subhanallah. But they, you, will, you, are, you are breaking their personalities. Oh. And you are making them hypocrites. They are good in front of you and outside they do the same thing. Subhanallah. Yeah, so that's not the solution. The best solution to bring a good change in your children is to be a model for them. You do the good thing. You go and pray in time. You say the truth. Don't say it to your child. Go say it to your uncle that dad is not at home. Don't, don't do that. Sorry. Yeah. You say the truth, you maintain uh, sadaqat in your home, you maintain charity, you maintain good ties with the people, you do all the good things. Mm -hmm. Then you can expect the same good things in the children. Because the children are created by Allah subhanahu in a way that they try to imitate those who are bigger than them in, in, the, in the house. Mm -hmm. You can see your own children at home, when you pray they come and pray with you. Yes. It's not because they love prayer, no, it's because they love you. They love what you are doing. They just want yes, to they imitate. Want to imitate yeah. yeah, this is what they do. So the most important thing for the parents to bring a good positive change in their children is to erect themselves. 
Be concerned about your own attitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you, if you reflect on the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa gives us a, a, such a nice example. In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu in the Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ hmm. That in the person of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a good model for you. Allah made him a model. He's not coming and lecturing and going away. No. no. He's practicing everything. Mm-hmm. which is enabling the Sahaba, or which, is, which is the best advice for the, the attitude of the of Prophet Sallallahu is the best motive and advice for the Sahaba. Mm-hmm. So it affected the Sahaba. Likewise, when we become models for our children, at that time, we will not be required to lecture them or to advise them those you know, classical ways of, you know, of addressing the children. Uh, we will not be required to do all those things. Yeah. When I look at the example of the Prophet ﷺ, and I look at myself, you know, I know as a father, how hard time, you know, times can be sometimes with children. Sometimes you lose your temper. Sometimes you get angry, you know. It just makes you realize that uh, it's, a, it's such a big uh, miracle that the Prophet ﷺ, you know, how he dealt with, with people, how he dealt with children, how he dealt with his family, you know, the patience, you know. Uh, you find yourself, you know, sometimes you feel like you're educated, you feel like you've achieved so much in your life. Yet this little child can really, yeah. you know, flip your switch, you know, and you really lose it. Yet, uh, you know, and you then you look, you realize, you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and you realize how short you fall, you know, and what an example, and how mir- I mean, what a miracle this is, you know, for a person to be consistent throughout his life that he never hit a child, or he never, you know, raised mm-hmm. his hand or against a child, or screamed at a child, you know. I mean, True. at least the least that we do is like you know sometimes mm-hmm. scream our heads to our children because you know, we get so angry, you know. And really, I mean, when I look at that, just that one thing, as the Prophet said, I mean, how how he was able to to contain himself, you know. I consider myself a very calm person, mm-hmm. but man, sometimes you know, my, my kids can really switch, flip my sw- switch, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Prophet said all his life. You know, and I live in AC, I drive a car, I have access to clean water very easily. All these luxuries are with me, you know. Uh, but the Prophet you know, there was no AC and the hot weather. You know, even those things influence your temper. You know, I know myself, if I travel sometimes, I go for a camp for two, three days, and I don't have access to all these, these uh, luxuries, it, it affects my temper, actually. I get very irritated. Now, him, his whole life living in these harsh conditions, and still his temper was was unmoved, you know, it was very solid, you know, you have, uh, you know, and it's, you know, going and around, doing something when he's supposed to do something else, you know, and going and wandering for hours, <laughs> and then the process him goes to look for him and finds him, and he sees he's playing with the kid, or he's, he's distracted, and he kind of like laughs, and like, what are you doing, you know, I would probably like spank my child or something, or like, what are you doing, you know, I told you to go there, what are you, two hours now, you know, and the process kind of like laughs, because he understands the the nature of children, you know, and that they, they will get distracted. There's a game there, and you tell your child, go and throw the trash out, <laughs> what you will do? You will go for the game, man. True, yeah? yeah, And that's how we were as children yeah, as well. This is one yeah. of the challenges, that we don't understand the requirements of the level, or yeah. the age in which the child is. We it's just the stage treat, of yeah, development. We have to understand the, the requirements of that stage. If yeah. your child is within two years, or with him seven years, let's say, oh, he's a teenager, there are different requirements. Different, yeah. You have to deal with them in different ways. You know? And yeah. you have to be very patient because you cannot have quick results of terbiya. Uh, this is impossible. Mm. The results of terbiya comes at the end, after a long period of time. You cannot make a terbiya today and get its results tomorrow. tomorrow huh? Because the word terbiya itself means an effort which is made to read something over and over. That's oh, terbiya. terbiya. Yeah. So if you, if you want the results of that, we have to be patient. Not wasbir. 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 Why ta is there in between? This is more, yani. yeah. Yeah, wasbir means make patience a nature founded in you. Allah, for. Naturally, it should come from your patience, you know. Wasbir Yeah, it's not so. Whenever there's increment in letters, in mabani, there's increment in maani, in meanings. More letters, more meanings, deeper yeah. meanings. So Allah is saying, Command your family to make prayer. Allah. And be patient, because Allah knows that this is not an easy task. You'll have to suffer and struggle with your family. Be patient. Don't curse them. Don't make dua against them. Make dua for them. Make it interesting for them. Don't make it a problem for them. Some parents, when they come to invite their children, let's say, 
for prayer, they make it a problem for them. Yeah. They put them in a challenge that whether to see the program which you love the most or come and pray. Don't do it like this for them. They will not mm. love, love prayer. They will hate prayer yes. in that way. So we have to be wise while dealing with our children and we have to understand the level from which the, ch the children when they are young, all what they need is, is love. Mm. When they grow a bit, when they make their own opinions, their own understandings, they want listening. Now they want you to listen. Mm. When they grow up and become, you know, uh, let's say, teenagers, they, now they need responsibilities mm. and appreciation. Yeah. Give them some responsibilities and then appreciate when they, when they achieve 10% of that thing, appreciate them. Appreciate yeah, do not expect your children to achieve 100% in everything from the first day. You know. Let them do it over, over a period of time. And this is how we have to go with our children. Lots of patience as our parents went with us Mm -hmm. Lots of patience. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Uh, last question. Inshallah, we only have about one minute. Uh, there's a statement that we keep hearing uh, from, I believe it's Ali radiallahu anhu, mm -hmm. about, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it goes something like, it talks about stages of children's development. It says, you know, when they're this young, that you should be their friend or their, you know, or play with them. Sorry, play with your children. Did, are you aware of this statement? Yeah, I was actually just play with the uh, yeah. children for seven. Is this years. an authentic? Uh, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, there something? are some, you know, some books which mention that, but authentic uh, authenticity is doubtful a bit. Mm. But it says that play with your children for seven years, no. and, and then you know make friendship with them for seven years. Yeah. So this is because the second seven years, they are 14 years, they yeah. are young people, you have, to have, right. you have to deal with them as like equals now. Yes, Although you guide them, you monitor them from a distance, mm. you keep a gap for them to function. Yeah. This is the best way of terbiya, mm. that you allow them to function, to carry some of the burden of the life. Do not leave them without any burden, that mm -hmm. will make them lazy. You know? The yeah. Prophet himself would put some burden on his children. Yes, Fatima radiallahu anha would do lots of work for Ali radiallahu in her in his home. Yeah. Why is she doing all those? Because this was taught to her in the house of the Prophet So this is how we have to you know, manage to take care of our children in order to gift ourselves, not any other person. Your children are considered to be gifts for you because they are sadaqa jariya for you. Yeah. Whenever they will do something, the better, the better they do, the better you are getting rewards from Allah so, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's gift ourselves some good gifts. Um, Why? Training our children in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. A beautiful show, alhamdulillah. And uh, we hope that uh, you will watch it again. If you missed it, if you're just joining us right now, inshallah, you'll have the recording tomorrow on YouTube and on our page on Facebook, A Time to Please Allah. Make sure that you follow uh, us, inshallah, and all our social media. And we'll see you, inshallah, bidnillah, next Thursday on another episode of Time to Please Allah. Jazakumullah khair. We'll see you again on the next episode, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Time to please Allah. A chance to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says. All on who spend in good cause. Good deeds are opportunities. Sparkling, bright and true. Raising you in the sight of Allah and adorning Al Jannah for you. So rush to earn his reward. Don't forget the